All right, so welcome everyone. In this chapter, we're going to talk about the creation process in the simulation of the dust from the backdrop. Okay. Uh, first of all, let me just going to open the outliner, and here in this whole outliner, we have got only the sack. Okay, let me just name it first of all, not a sack back. Sorry. Let's say we call it only a sack. That's fine. And now, if we're going to play the timeline, you can see. I have got that thing inside my file with the input node having the cache node attached to it. Okay, so if you can see carefully, we do have at frame 33 the drop or approximately 34. That means this is the contact position of the floor and the back. So I guess this is the particular positions where we can blow up or puff out the, uh, the dust or the cement particles from the back. So let me just start with the process of the fluids and let's say we create a 3D container, set the timeline back once again and let me just arrange that over the grid. All right, that's going to be fine. And of course, we need to increase and enlarge the the area of this fluid, the container size of the fluid, because if you can see, the bag is a way too large to fit inside this container, and you can see there's a lot of displays also. So first of all, we're gonna place accordingly the position, and now I've got two two things to do. First, what I can do is that I can increase the size of the container, and or I can scale it uniformly. Well, most of the time I do not generally scale. I prefer the uh, playing wrong with the container size but for this reactions uh, I've came to know that uh, if we're gonna increase the size of the scale uh, that we're gonna give us a pretty well and fast results the reason I do not know what exactly is this but the fluid container is not like that much good as compared to the scale so what I'm gonna do is that let me just scale that thing to 3 and just position that carefully again just drop that onto the grid that's fine and what next i'm going to do is that let me just play around with the container size let's say 8 we're going to do best 8 10 and 8 that will be setting perfect for the bag and here you can also see that okay let me just put a little bit more over here and i guess the value 10 should gonna work fine for me so 8 by 10 by 10, that's going to be the perfect value for us. All right. And this time, since, you know, I always keep on saying that, what should exactly the match for the base resolution in compared to the ratio of the size? Well, ratio 4 will is the least one. So let's say at size 8, we can't use 32 or maximum by 40 by considering the 10 and 10 of the y and z containers uh container size i can't go for just only 40 resolution that will be way way uh you can say less so what should i gonna do in that case let me just take that thing to 120 as a minimum start yeah as a minimum start so i guess my final resolution that goes when i gonna end this uh you know uh, process I guess 150 will gonna be my end resolution yes but since here we need to test out so much uh, so many attributes and we need to play the timeline fast just to make the process and the course uh, easier for you to understand let me just get start with 60 as a base that's really gonna be a good start so for the boundary I say none none and for the y we're gonna give negative and under the display section, let's just go for boundary draw to the bonding box so that we can rid of, get rid of those voxels display. And in the dynamic simulations, let's say we're going to use the damp approx to 1.5 or maybe 0 0.010. High del solve will obviously going to be, we're going to utilize all the grids with sub steps leading to 3 and solve a quality relating to 40 to 45 okay so that's very going to be fine let me just do the dark background 
and just let's uh, get rid of the grid uh, again coming back to the start frame since I told you in the beginning I guess frame 33 should going to be the good start so let's say the start frame should be 33 the simulation rate scale is really a very important attribute for us because the motion of the fluids is really going to be very very important because I do have realized that uh, since this is probably going to be my 10th or 12th render or you can say the test because simulation rate scale is really going to important because you know uh, the bigger value of the simulation rate scale will not going to cooperate your motion of the back towards the uh, the release of the dust since you know the like the way the bag has fall upon the floor in a similar way there should going to be some correlation or you can say uh, a relationship between the bag drop effect and as well as the dust puff okay because slower the motion of the bag slower will going to be the puff of the dust okay so we do have to coordinate these two settings really very carefully so what i've came to the conclusion is that the simulation rate scale if we're going to give three with a start and let me just put a key over it, roll back the time slider and let's just do one thing first of all let me just disable the evaluation of the fluid container and coming back over here at frame number uh, 33 let's say 33 to um, I guess 60 I guess okay we're gonna drop this value to 1 so from 30 till 60 is an idle start for the fluids to catch the pace because you know you can now think of of the situation like a bag we're going to drop upon the floor so obviously the initial the initial fluids will really going to be uh they they need to be a little bit fast in the motions okay however however i'll also going to improve the motion of the fields with the help of the volume access fields where I can utilize the turbulence as well as some internal forces to really accentuate the behavior and the motion of the fluids. Okay, so we're going to come to that later on. So, again, following the content, the simulation rate scale we have already calculated it. And now let's just switch on emitting sub steps also. The reason why, because you know, uh, the fluids will really going to be fast in the initial, so there should not going to be any miss in the voxel so the values of the density when transform when transform from one voxel to another voxel requires more study and more calculations so sub steps will really going to help me a lot and of course i also going to utilize the auto resize that's really going to be a big time saver for us otherwise you have to really wait for your simulations to work and here one thing to be really be careful just need to switch off the resize the close boundaries okay coming back uh, to the max resolutions i guess 350 will going to be a good start because you know uh, till the end of the frame 150 the the container size of the fluid will really going to be a big i believe so my resolution will uh, the the final value that i got was for x that was 300 for z that was 250 and for y that was 80 or 100 so that's really going to be a big resolution so you should provide a bigger value here okay or resize margin i should leave that thing to two approx two or maybe one and that's really going to be a, a simple task and i recommend you that for the auto resize we should also going to provide with some keys uh, let's do one thing uh, at frame 30 i guess 34 let's say 33 Let's put a key over it and start with the value of 4. Okay. Now, from 33 till 50 or may could be 60 approx, you can come again by 1. So, in that case, you're not going to utilize or you're not going to, uh, you know, uh, calculate extra time for the simulation because auto resize margin will really going to... Uh, no doubt it's going to improvise and always going to help your fluids not to collide with the container or to reduce the uh, instability in the fluid but still it will going to eat your cpus 
so the best thing would be to adjust the auto recess margin as well okay then coming again back to the density section uh, we're going to leave the density scale to 0.5 the buoyancy as this is going to be the dust so the nature of the dust will always going to fall down the cement dust or you can say the general dust so the buoyancy will going to be minus 2 and of course we also need to end this uh, the dust but in in a very gradual it should be a gradual process so the dissipation for me should be um, let's say 0 0.150 will going to be the best values again coming down to the noise since the dust will have really very soft motion if you're going to increase the resolution also again it's not going to bring uh, detail inside your uh, fluids so general considering the noise as point one will give you some more tweaking inside the behavior of the density by adding some few details to your simulations but i also recommend you guys do not extend this value beyond uh, this figure because it may you may go, gonna end with some unwanted jitters so that's again going to be the instability i should say again followed by the gradient force the gradient force will going to help the fluids to uh, accelerate towards you know their uh, their direction the way they are moving ahead so let's just come back again at frame 33 and let's say 30 will going to be the good start for that from 30 till frame 60 i guess uh, let's say 63 for for 30 frames only and again i going to come back here for five so the magnitude i'm going to leave here for the gradient force should be five because i don't want that and it's quite obvious that the fluids cannot going to travel with a fast rate or with the with the fast force uh in the end of the frames since at the end it has almost lost its velocities okay finally in the velocity sections let's say the swell I would like to give only three. The reason why I'm giving a uh, less swell because this dust or the puff of the dust when when it's gonna come outside this the sack should not gonna be really turbulent. So by increasing the value of the swell, it will going to affect your fluids a lot. So a value of three should be an idle start. Okay. So guys, I believe so. We have discussed so many attributes of this. Uh, process now let's just going to move to the next lesson to further continue with this process